It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is David Harrison of the Locked On Commanders Podcast, here to tell you that U.S. Cellular knows how important your kids' relationship with technology is, and they've made it their mission to help them establish good digital habits early on. That's why they've partnered with Screen Sanity, a nonprofit dedicated to helping kids navigate the digital landscape. And for a smarter start to the school year, U.S. Cellular is also offering a free basic phone on new eligible lines, providing an alternative to a smartphone for children. Start smarter with U.S. Cellular. Visit uscellular.com slash built for us to find out more. Terms apply. Another mock draft Monday on tap for a brand new episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. We're breaking down every single selection that Steele and I make for every single round. Let's tap in. Let's get this money. Thank you for joining us. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? And thank you so much for joining us for the Monday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, another Mock Draft Monday special prepping all of the fantasy GMs out there for what you need to know round by round for your upcoming drafts. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Steele and I are hype for this season. We're inching closer to that 1,000 subscriber mark. Wouldn't be here without y'all. So hype for this episode, Steele. Doing these live mock drafts for you and I, honestly, Aside from all wanting to help our listeners, it's been really helping me and my team. You know, I got to bring up my performance after last year. We're going to be going rapid fire, round by round once again, one minute away from the draft, my friend. Thank you for joining me again and for doing this with me as always. It's an absolute pleasure to be talking hockey with you, Flip, yep. every single day throughout the week. And look, the, one of my favorite parts about doing these mock drafts is we're, we're getting a variety of where you're where, where we're picking from the first mock mm-hmm. draft we pick from the fourth and eighth selection the second one we pick from the first and 12th it's giving mm-hmm. us different looks of potentially where you're going to be drafting from right. a- again if you're drafting from the third pick uh third overall pick in your fantasy league do a mock mm-hmm. draft with the third overall pick and see how that team uh you know stands up at the end of the draft and it helps you when it comes to the real thing. So that's my favorite part. Talk a talking hockey with you, Flip. But B, Thank it you. just gives you a different look at how different leagues are going to look and where you're drafting from in your position. One hundred percent. And we're doing this one ten GM league standard categories, same positional breakdown as before: two centers, two left wing, two right wing, four D, two goalie, and four bench spots. So Steeler going to go round for round again. Steel breaking it down <laughs> fast and furious. You're going to be on the board here, in a second, but I think we're quite clear on how the first few draft picks go, at least those one and two. Yeah, one and two have to be Connor, Mc- Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. I think if you're drafting Pasternak or McKinnon or even mm-hmm. Matthews or anybody else second overall, I think that's a mistake. It's not a hit, it's not a miss because you're still drafting a superstar, but mm-hmm. if you're not drafting Leon Dreisaitl second, I think that's a clear mistake because he also has that dual eligibility center and left wing position. And you and I are going to do a bold predictions episode, you know, five bold predictions on the season. One of those that's brewing under my cap is could Leon Dreisaitl actually outpoint Connor McDavid? That's something I think we need to actually look at. Is it a bold prediction? Of course, that's something that may be more fun to talk about than actually play out. Matt Kachuk on the board here, Steele. I'm in the sixth slot. Nikita Kucherov, Jason Robertson. Right now, also, Matthew Kachuk getting the dual eligibility left and right wing, which is interesting. I got to be taking Kachuk here in the six slot steal. I'm very happy with getting this guy on my team. Yeah, I think so, too. And you made a good point a couple of episodes ago about Mm. uh, keeping an eye out for those updates, potentially, because there there have been a few players who have had dual eligibilities who are center left wing, center right wing, and could get updated before the start of season and lose one of those uh eligibility on those Mm -hmm. positions so keep Mm -hmm. an eye out for that uh it is surprising to see both Matthew Kachuk have the left wing and right wing but uh, that could change uh, by the start of the season it's something though that you have to kind of keep your eye on this is also I think one of the ways that these platforms bring attention to the ahead of the draft hype 
putting out some questionable positional eligibilities for players gets people yeah. talking, right? See on social media, it gets people questioning whether they're actually going to be there. So mm-hmm. when it comes down to the actual season, keep your eyes peeled on where it actually lands in terms of what your players are actually able to slot into. Because I really do feel it's like, you know, in ESPN and for NBA and all those leagues. And when it comes to the rankings, it's all about the hype train. That's how I'm looking at that. I'm back on the board here, though, Steel. Round two, Brady Kachuk was just taken, Kale McCarr, Tage Thompson, Mitch Marner. Mm-hmm. This time around last year, I would have been so fired up and so okay with taking <laughs> Kirill Kaprizov in this slot. I'm still okay with it, and I'm going to do it here. I yeah. just want this guy to perform to what we know he can do, and which I know you'll back me up on. He's got all the talent in the world to do it. I like taking Kaprizov here in this slot. Yeah, I think it's the right choice. And I think it I think it is the right choice. And we know that he can produce at that level, just mm. getting the guys around him to support his play and his his style of play as well. Right, uh, right. Again, trying to get Matt Boldy to produce from what we believe that he can do this upcoming season. Matt right. Zuccarello is a playmaker, but he doesn't shoot the puck that much. He doesn't put pucks on net. So you're mm. going to lose some peripherals with that guy. Uh, only only two superstars, maybe three superstars in Minnesota right now. And Capri solves the top dog. So very mm. excited about what he what he's about to do. Sidney Crosby still on the board, but I already have, you know what? I think I'm going to have oh. to take Sidney Crosby right now. I'm losing. I've got three seconds on Can't the clock. I've already... I've already got the, uh, I've already got my two centermen positions filled, mm-hmm. but uh, you got to keep aware. You got to be aware of the clock there. I wasn't looking at the clock right now. It was That's running okay. down on me. I had three you seconds got left, so I I'm got Sidney Crosby this. and Leon Dreisaitl. I'm totally fine with that. And I want to ask you this mm. before it gets back to me. Mm. We've already done three mock drafts now. Yeah. What is your favorite position to draft from? Like, Ooh. are you a, you're like top four, you bottom four, you in the middle? Like, where are you looking at? What's your favorite right now? Yeah, I think it's clear that the first would be the obvious answer. But in snake draft steel, if there's not too many GMs, I love taking, if I'm not getting first, I love the snake draft move of going last and then again at the top of that round. I love that selection. So if I'm not first, I like being dead last. That's just me. That's uh, I think I'm the opposite of that. Actually, I think I'm the opposite of that. I'm gonna go William Nylander, uh, William Nylander mm. here, just to get a right wing forward. Uh, you this know, year for absolute, sure. interesting name for sure. Um, I, I think I'm opposite of that. I, you know, obviously the first mm. round pick uh, mm. is very. I'm, I would be very happy to get that first round pick, but I like yeah. drafting fourth or I like drafting eighth. One of those positions where I can yeah. get back to you know back close, but not close enough where I'm going back to back. So I really like Fair. drafting, not in the middle, but, you know, in between the first and the middle position. Yeah, and it's a bold take on my part, Steel, for sure. And it's also, like, obviously you want to be taking first overall. That should be yeah. what everyone is thinking. I do like getting creative, though, because I do find those fourth to fifth to sixth, aside from the first round, to be very tricky. Anyway, I'm back on the board here. I want to go. i got two forwards. My left wing position is locked up. I want to go to the blue line here. Eric Carlson is obviously an attractive name. Adam Fox. Yeah, I'm going to a player that we've talked a lot about that I think is going to fill out the peripherals once again and who's established himself as a star on the blue line in Rasmus Dahlin. I knew it. I knew, I knew you were working your hey, way up to that. I'm looking at the you. board right now. I think, I think it's a proper pick, especially in the third round right now. Probably thank could you. have gone a little bit higher, uh, but those peripherals. The, Third the, or fourth the, round, I think, is fair for Darlene. Could have been higher, though. Yeah, you're right. he definitely could have been higher. I, the, yeah. You know what? This is actually a small league. It's only 10 teams in this league. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, it is understandable that he falls a little bit back. But, you know, uh, I think, it, yeah, you're right. This is a 10-man league. So, at that at that point, he definitely mm-hmm. should be taken. Uh, but in a 16-team league, he's probably taken in the uh, late second round or early third. It's the development of his all-around game steal that just made yeah. me pay attention to this guy. The fact that he started to really, and not just throw around the body for the sake of like hitting people. Mm-hmm. This guy was crushing bodies and really establishing himself and his all-around game in Buffalo. And that's what got me the most excited about seeing him develop. So I love that he's on my team. I think he's been on a few of my teams in these mock drafts. I'm looking down the board now, Steele. Am I interested in taking a goalie? Yeah, I think so. But I'm also interested in waiting a little bit longer. So I'm going to start looking to my center position. I got Matt Boldy on the board here as well. Nico Heeshier, Kyle mm-hmm. Connor, Braden Point is right at the top of this list. 
I love what Braden Point can bring when he's healthy. He is definitely one of the best out there. Kucherov playing with Point is an elite combination. I think I want a little piece of Tampa because I think a lot of people are actually sleeping on Tampa Bay this year. Give me yeah. Braden Point as my first center on my team, and I'm getting him there in the sixth round. I think that's a pretty good pick to get Braden Point. Yeah, the peripheral, the, a the offensive, the offensive ability is insane. Power mm-hmm. play points, shots on goal, mm-hmm. even hits for uh, for mm-hmm. his size. So I think Braden Point is a great choice if you need a centerman position at this point in the round. I'm going to get my first defenseman next on the board, um, and you know the the guy I wanted was now taken. Dougie Hamilton was taken from me, but I've got a backup here in Mir- Miro Heiskin. I'm actually I've been trying to trade for Miro Heiskin in the in the league that I just drafted because um, I want him so bad. I think he's going to be be so good for the Dallas stars uh, for many, many years, obviously, but that's who I'm looking at right now. Miro Heiskin and on the board projections, 10 goals, 58 assists, you know, somewhat the same of what he had last year. I mm-hmm. think he's going to get more than what his projections are showing though. Power play is going to be absolutely great in, uh, in, in Dallas as well. He puts a ton of shots on net and mm-hmm. I absolutely love this kid and what, what he showed us last year, especially. You know I'm on board with this selection as well, Steele. I think he's going to be a big piece of what continues to be a successful team in Dallas. It's mm-hmm. going to be another bit of successful fantasy breakdowns on the episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, Monday edition. We're going to continue to break down our live picks on this mock draft. Is this 4.0, Steele? We're already up to our fourth mock draft. Is that right? This is 3.0. This is our 3.0, third mock baby. draft, I believe. Thank you very much, and we're going to continue to bring that fire as well as our friends from Jace Medical. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind so you're not just hoping you have access to medication in an emergency Jace Medical, make sure you have it in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy, medication, delivery, and ongoing care. Make sure you don't get caught unprepared. Save more than 360 bucks getting the life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical. Make sure that you tap into Jace Medical and make sure you are prepared. Save more than 360 bucks by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional 20 bucks off by using code locked on at checkout. JaceMedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com promo code locked on. This is David Harrison of the Locked On Commanders podcast to draw your attention to the taste that's going down in the bread aisle. All thanks to Dave's Killer Bread, Bread Amplified. Anyone can bake bread, few can rock it, and Dave's Killer Bread is the champion of killer taste, killer texture, and is for those who want to rise above the boring. Organic and healthy doesn't have to mean boring when it's made with the highest quality organic and non-GMO ingredients packed with whole grains, fiber, and protein. 21 Whole Grains and Seeds Bread has a subtle sweetness and a seed-coated crust, while good seed products are the boldest and sweetest of all. Dave's Killer Bread was built on the belief that second chances can change lives because after spending 15 years in prison, not only did the guy with the guitar you see on every loaf turn his own life around, he's helping others to do the same. By hiring the best people for the job, regardless of their background, he's ensuring your mornings no longer taste like cardboard, your taste buds don't have to feel sedated, and your sandwiches can become superstars. Visit daveskillerbread.com to learn more and look for Dave's Killer Bread in the bread aisle of your favorite grocery store. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network where you can find your favorite team from all four major sports leagues, including the NCAA, your team every single day. Flip, I know we were rushing to get to your pick mm-hmm. over there. I want to no talk problem. about mine real quickly because I grabbed Please. Connor Hellebuck in mm-hmm. the fifth round. I know we've talked about waiting for to, to draft goalies. Mm-hmm. But I think sure. if you can get Connor Hellebuck in the fifth round after a few of those other superstar goalies are going, look, we've mm. talked about Hellebuck's game fantasy wise. He has yep. been a top three, top four fantasy hockey goaltender for the last four seasons in a row. So if you can get Connor Hellebuck yeah. in the fifth round, it's an absolute steal in my opinion. I know we've mm-hmm. talked about waiting for those uh, later rounds to draft goalies, but I couldn't, I couldn't resist drafting Connor Hellebuck. I think he's just also such a gamer steal. 
yeah, we've been a little bit uncertain about what shakes out in Winnipeg, but I think actually what's been going on off ice included is this team Mm -hmm. is starting to actually come together. I know that's a hard thing to kind of piece when we're just looking from the outside on the way in, but I think Winnipeg is going to be a lot better. I know you and I differ a little bit, but I love getting Connor Hellebuck. He's a gamer. Goalies are starting to fly off the board. I'm going to probably wait one more round to take my goalies. It is a little bit of a bold strategy, but also I'm starting to look at my right wingers. This is a position that I think this year is very much in flux. There's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of young guys potentially stepping up. There's a lot of older guys that might be starting to fade due to injury or otherwise. It's tricky for me, Steele. I got Mark Stone on the board, Clayton Keller, Jordan Kairou, Joe Pavelski. Alex DeBrincat is currently bringing dual position eligibility, and I'm really starting to buy into what Detroit is starting to do up front. I want to take DeBrincat in this spot. A couple of other names that I'm looking at, though. Drake Batherson, you know I love. Travis Konechny, yes. you know I love. Adrian Kempe, also a very interesting name. But I think with what is going to happen offensively in Detroit and Alex DeBrinket now getting what he wanted, there's Patrick Kane rumors around as well. I want a bit of elite offensive talent steal, and I'm going to be taking DeBrinket here unless he gets sniped off my table, which I don't think is going to happen. Well, it's only one pick away, and Bertuzzi Bertuzzi. goes ahead of him. So Mm. Alex DeBrinket's there on the board for your taking right now. Yeah, I'm going to take him. You know what? I'm happy for you, but I'm also very upset because that's who I was looking at for my hey. next pick because I need a left winger and that dual elig- eligibility would have been very nice. Connor Bedard goes 57th overall, has that center position. He scored a hat trick in his first uh, game in a Chicago Black Blackhawks jersey. At this point, I need a left winger. Clayton Keller is on the board. I know he's a stud for the Arizona Coyotes. Pierre-Luc Dubois has got dual eligibility. Mm-hmm. I, I think I'm going to go actually with Carter Verhage. He also has that dual eligibility. You know, he's got the center and the left wing position, and he's a goal scorer. Right there with Matthew Kachuk, he is the next in line for goal scoring. Barkov's the playmaker on the team. He passes yep. the puck first and looks for those uh, rebounds second. But Matthew Kachuk does everything, and Carter Verhage just shoots. And when he shoots, he's most likely scoring. Lethal, lethal with the shot steal. I've been talking about that release. Also, the Florida Panthers scored the six most goals overall last year. You want to be taking a piece of what Florida is going to be doing offensively. Like I said, yeah. what I think happens for Florida, the book is out on them now, right? They're not going to be surprising nearly as many teams. We know what they can do. So I think that's a, a, a wrinkle. But, you know, yeah. I love Verhage big time. Shout out to the Niagara Ice Dogs as well. I'm going after my second defenseman here. I'm looking at Brent Burns. You know he's going to get a ton of shots on net and a lot of points on the power play too, and you know assists as well. But I think I'm going to take a chance right now on Marit Sider. I think his projections are actually a little bit low. I think he's going to get a lot more points. I think he's going to put the puck on net a lot more. We know he's going to uh, lay the body out there and get the blocks. Mm -hmm. But I think other than that, the projections for Sider are a lot lower than I than I believe they're. uh, I believe than what he's going to produce. I was so high on Cider last year, Steele. I think we were just one year off. People are overlooking yeah. him. The Detroit Red Wings got better. He's not going to have to carry as much workload. I think that's a really, really great pick for a player that also is just so young and just coming into the league. So small yeah. sample size, and maybe that was my fault for jumping the gun on predicting him as the next great D-man. He might still be that steal, and I like that you were able to grab him in a very, very fair round. What are we at? The end of the seventh round? I like it. We are in, yeah, we're in the middle of the seventh round right now. You're one pick away from your mm-hmm. 66th overall pick mm-hmm. here. Still a lot of good names. Going on the to board. a goalie steal, one that yeah. you know I took a little heat for drafting early in a previous mock draft, but Philip Gustafson is the real deal. I have a really good gut yes. feeling about this goaltender. Yeah, maybe the wins might not be where I want them to be considering what I think the Minnesota Mm -hmm. wild are going to have to battle through, but I think his numbers are going to be solid. So I'm going to take Gustafson as my first goalie. And then when my pick does roll back around, I'm going to be addressing my blue line once again, because I only have one blue liner currently and the rest of my forward group is filled out except for one right, right winger. So this is where you need to really pay attention to your positional breakdowns and make sure you're not leaving one hole gaping. And that's exactly what I did in my fantasy league that I drafted for real last week. Mm-hmm. I let, you know, I went forward heavy. I drafted all forwards pretty much first. I grabbed Dougie Hamilton. 
uh, Dougie Hamilton and Shea nice. Theodore were my first defenseman. And then after that, again, I just went straight back. You love Shea through. Theodore. I like that, Steel. You're I sticking to your gun. I love Shea Theodore. I love Shea, Shea Theodore. Mm-hmm. He gets it done offensively. When he's healthy, to right. me, he's one of the most uh, dynamic – yeah, you know, one of the most dynamic defensemen in the league. Obviously, there's a, a lot of defensemen who are ahead of him in that mm. department, but I really love what Shea Theodore brings to the table for the Vegas Golden Knights. It also helps when the rest of that team, both forward and <laughs> defensive group, are just very balanced. It uh, yes. really actually plays right into his game, which is very balanced itself. Going back to the blue line, like I said, Victor Hedman is still an absolute stud. We saw Mikhail Sergachev step out on the blue line last year for the Tampa Bay Lightning. I think that continues to happen. I'm happy. I've taken Sergachev steal at least in one or two of our other mock drafts. The guy's yes. a stud. <laughs> hits, shots on goal. He's got the power play points as well. I'm going to take Sergachev and address that blue line a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's the. I, th- I think that was the best defenseman available right there as well. I know there's a few sure. more still here on the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. Noah Dobson's there, Aaron Ekblad, he's still injured. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's getting it's getting a little bit well. down. The Darnell Dar- Darnell Nurse is still there. Alex mm-hmm. Petrangelo, Gustav mm-hmm. Forsling, who's going to get a ton of minutes in the absence of uh, Montour and Ekblad for to begin with. Devin True. Taves is still on the board. You know how I like Devin Taves. Uh, not big in the peripheral stats, but I like what he does uh, with the overall game. Uh, I agree. You know, fantasy wise as well. I'm going to have to go back here to get a left winger on the board. I'm looking okay. at left wingers and dual eligibilities. Okay. Victor Arvidsson's there. He gets a ton of shots Ooh. on net. I'm looking for some goal scores. Jared McCann. You know I love me some Jared McCann as well. True. Um, I think I'm going to have to go with Jared McCann here. I think Seattle's still okay. going to bring it, and he's a goal-scoring machine. He scores goals for them right there alongside Matty Beneers. Mm-hmm. And I, you, you know how I feel about McCann. You know how I feel about him. I talk about him a lot. He's one of those waiver wire pickups, and he doesn't mm-hmm. get enough credit. I think that whole team doesn't get enough credit. And also we highlighted this the other day. It's actually the defensive side of that group that really doesn't get enough love. And that obviously allows the offensive unit to do its thing when you don't need to stress about what's happening behind you. And yes. Yeah. Is Jared McCannon tough to maybe repeat what he did? Sure. But he's got the talent to at least scrape it. You're back on the board steal. Where are you headed? I'm going to our boy over here on the blue line in uh, for the oh. New York Islanders, Noah Dobson, who we both believe is going to have a pretty good season. I think he's going to yeah. uh, he's going to get the shots on net. He's I want him to hits. steal. I really want him to. I really want him to as well. We're going to continue with this draft, but first, this episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Snap into action. Snap into action. With the NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get two hundred dollars in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place five uh, when you place a five dollar bet. That's two hundred dollars in bonus bets, win or lose. So make sure you're signing up with FanDuel. We've got the code ready and locked for you. No pun intended. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get into the action. The app is super easy to use. Use There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and my favorite is obviously the same game parlay. I'm doing that every single every single week mm-hmm. with the NFL season kicking off. 16-game parlay, throw a dollar on there. You never know what's going to happen. So visit vanduel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. Vanduel.com, the official partner of the NFL. NFL Sunday Ticket is now on YouTube and YouTube TV, which means that you can stay close to your team even if you don't live in their town. Like, maybe you're a Raven who married a Seahawk who got a job in the land of the Falcons. With NFL Sunday Ticket, you can watch your team's out-of-market Sunday afternoon games no matter where you live because you shouldn't have to change teams even if you change towns. NFL Sunday Ticket, now on YouTube and YouTube TV. Go to youtube.com slash presale to get $50 off. Terms and embargoes apply. Offer ends 919. No refund. Subscription auto renews. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. What if your life story was a podcast? Would it be a comedy or a thriller? Whatever genre, State Farm is there for your what ifs. To keep your life story from becoming a mystery. Because when you've got questions, they've got answers. 24-7, you can file a claim on the State Farm mobile app or simply give your agent a call. It's how insurance plays a supporting role in your story. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Visit statefarm.com for a quote today. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. 
Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, hit the follow button. We appreciate all that love and support you show us every single day. Leave a five-star review. And if you want to be a part of the Fantasy Hockey League, continue to DM us on Twitter. We'll get you added onto the list. The cutoff date is three days from now. September 20th is the cutoff date. And then we'll send out those invitations on the 21st for whoever gets picked in both those leagues. We're very excited about it. That's why we're doing these mock drafts right now. We appreciate all our supporters out there. Steel, this is draft season, baby. And we just saw a bunch <laughs> of players go off the board in the 10th round. Cole Caulfield, Adrian Kempe, Devin Tays, you were just talking about. Interesting name in Jonathan Huberto, which it makes sense. He bounces back. I think you yes. might actually get a lot of value out of Jonathan Huberto. I think that's a pretty good pick right around the 10th round, even a little bit yeah. later, Steel. I'm going back to the blue line. I want to keep getting nasty, physical, and bringing those peripherals. I'm going with Darnell Nurse. You know I like this guy <laughs> for that exact reason. My blue line starting to look similar, Steel. Darlene, Sergachev, Nurse. But those are guys that, yeah, they chip in offensively for sure, but they bring a lot of peripheral value. I love that from my blue line, which is hard to find offense from at times. So at least you can bank on some of those guys bringing those peripherals. It definitely does. And look, we're showing a lot of our insider scoops right now, insider trading Fact. analysis with these mock drafts. You're you're seeing right now live our, fan, our, our targets right now, our fan mm -hmm. favorites of who we're trying to go after, especially yes. in these different leagues. So we're probably going to get snaked a little bit flip once we do 100%. these casual and competitive leagues. But we're, again, we're super excited about it. Uh, can't wait uh, for the mm -hmm. start of the regular season. And look, I've got three centermen right now. I need another right winger. Me too. But I love this player. Oh, I love Dylan Cousins. Go. I love Dylan Cousins a lot. 33 goals, 35 mm. assists is what he's projected for. Sure. I hope he gets a lot more power play time, but he brings the hits. He brings the penalty minutes. He brings the shots on goals. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, even though I've got three centermen right now, I'm going to put him on my bench. He's going to be my fourth and final, most likely final centerman. But I absolutely love Dylan Cousins and what he brings to the Buffalo Sabres as well been talking about this player you also probably want a piece of the buffalo sabers just by default for all the offense yeah. they're going to bring steel you're back on the board here we're in the 11th round where are you looking i'm going to a right winger i need one more right winger me to too. fill up my forward group right now yep, and i'm too. going to your boy since you snaked oh. me i'm going with drake batherson nice over here, projected for 22 goals 36 Stop. assists the plus minus might be a little iffy he's projected Should be for better this year though. It should be better, but the projections are showing something crazy. I don't, I don't want to believe into that, but mm -hmm. he's, you're going to get the peripherals, the shots on goal, the hits, the blocks, the power play points. So I'm going with Drake Batherson to fill out my right wing position. He also does bring that physicality at times, Steele. He's not afraid to throw his body around. It's one yeah. of those teams, though, that as much as I said you want a piece of the Sabres, I think you really do want a piece of the Ottawa Senators this year. I think they're going to yep. put up a ton of goals. I love that they brought in Corpusalo, another year of Jake Sanderson, another year of Shabbat, another year of Chikrin back there. There's a lot to like, at least on paper, about this Ottawa team. So I like that you're getting a piece of it. Right wing is where I want to go as well, Steele. Mark Stone, Cairo, Nakash, Sam Reinhart, Travis Konechny. I think the player that I'm looking at the most, Steele, is actually – a player that I like a lot. I'm going to go with Jordan Cairo. I know that's high right now, but I think his ceiling is also that high. I actually don't think that's high, actually. I think that's a perfect round for Jordan Cairo. I need some I've offense, seen him actually, too. So. I've actually seen him go a little higher. Obviously, you're going to lose some fantasy points with mm -hmm. the plus minus if that's one of the categories and whatnot, but he brings the shots. He True. brings the peripherals. He brings goals and assists. He's one of the top players alongside, obviously, Robert Thomas, mm. uh, you know, Braden Shen as well. But Jordan Kyrou is a goal scorer and he he brings the offensive for the St. Louis Blues. And it's going to be, to me, yeah. it's going to be a difficult, difficult year for St. Louis, but that's he's going to be one of those stars. I think that's just my main concern, Steele. It's hard to put the finger on what we think is going to happen for the St. Louis Blues. Yeah. We have our obvious doubts about Jordan Bennington. We even talked about the young kid Hoffer maybe stepping out this season and stealing some time away from Bennington. Mm -hmm. Aside from the salary they have invested in Bennington, I think we're spot mm -hmm. on with that take. I have one starting slot left. That's on my blue line. Then we're going to fill out our last four slots, which are all on the bench. That's how many are in this league. I'm going to take a little peek at the blue line options here. Tyson Berry, Seth Jones, Aaron Ekblad, Justin Falk, Tony D'Angelo Steele. 
I think I want to go. I I can't help but do it. I got Keandre Miller out here. I got Philip Ronek, Sean Dursey. I think I want to go down this list, and I got to go back to my boy and Keandre Miller. And it probably sounds like a broken record, but I honestly think this kid is right on the precipice of doing something special. I think I also love his body. I love everything about what he brings to the yeah. table. And he's going to fill out the peripherals. His stats last year, back it up, take a look. Keandre Miller, he's on my blue line steal. And once again, I think I've been crushing my blue line pick. So maybe I just need to mimic that. And the rest of my team, I'll figure out after. <laughs> you might have to because you're nailing it with the defensive group right now. Thank you. Uh, there's still a great, there's still a few good names there on the blue line. I'm going to be targeting a goal. Do you have two drafted goaltenders yet? Or you still only have Philip? Yeah, Wilson's on the team? break, I took Freddie Anderson as well. So. All right. All right. Definitely. Yeah, definitely missed that through my ad read, but okay. that's a good pick in itself. I'm going to go with Jeremy Swayman because of what we're believing Linus of what's going to happen to Linus Allmark. So I've got Jeremy Swayman and Connor Hellebuck locked and loaded on my goalie, my goalie list right now. And I need one more defenseman, one more defenseman and three bench spots. I'm going to go back, fill up my last defensive spot. Rasmus Anderson's on the board. Shea Theodore, my boy is on the board. Jakob Chikrin, you know, Shea Theodore's taken. He's gone. I'm going to my second guy here. And that's actually going to be Jakob Chikrin of the Ottawa Senators. I'm going to pair him up with Drake Batherson right now. And you know how I love to do that. Yeah, and honestly, everything on paper is aligning for Jacob Chikrin as long as he can stay healthy to be a very valuable fantasy piece and a really valuable piece for the Ottawa Senators. When he can bring the physicality, when he is on his game and his shot from the blue line, he... Is the, there's a lot to like, Steele. It's just he yeah. hasn't been able to keep himself in the lineup long enough to really buy in. But now that he is part of a much better team, looks like he's settled in. One full offseason now under his belt. You can't help but expect that he is going to return to that form that made a lot. What, how long did he talk about Chickman being the top piece that was going to move? Anyway. This is a part of my draft steal that I like getting a little frisky. I like going to some young players on the come up, and this isn't a bold take. Matty Beniers is out there. I'll take him as my first backup center. I don't have a backup center yet. I really like Matty Beniers. You know about this. And also, this isn't a bold take. This kid can bring it. Yes, he can. And, you know, I was talking about him with Jared McCann as well. Those are the two top dogs for the Seattle the Seattle Kraken. Obviously, they got mm-hmm. a few more uh, in the chamber. I'd, I'd be very excited to see what Shane Wright's able to do this year as well. Uh, you know, could interesting. be an interesting yep. pick for one of those bigger leagues, 16 team leagues towards the later stage of the draft. But keep an yep. eye on a, another prospect right now who has a lot of upside and a lot of hype coming into the NHL. So, uh, Maddie Beneers obviously getting it done right now for the Seattle Kraken. I've got too many centermen right now. I've got four centermen on my board. I know you're back up before I am, but I'm going over to the left wing position. I've got three bench spots left. I'm going two left wingers, uh, two left winger, right winger combo, Mm -hmm. and then one more defenseman for my bench spot. Yeah, and there's only four here. So ideally, you'd kind of want to take one at each position to balance it out. Yeah. But now I think it comes down to, you know, your research, your gut. How does your lead pan out? How is the, you know, categorical breakdown? We got, I want to go to the left wing steal. I got Max Domi. Jake DeBrusque, I think, is going to have a really good year. That's the name that's jumping off the page here because then you got David Perron. You have Anders Lee. I think I'm actually just going to go ahead and do it. He brings a lot of shots on net as well. He can bring the body. Give me Jake DeBrusque as one of those few younger pieces on Boston that should still be fantasy-wise. Very much so. I drafted Jake DeBrusque in my fantasy league. I forget what round it was in, but absolutely a stud still. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen with Boston and what they're going to shape out to be losing Patrice Bergeron. We David hope Krejci. we know, Steve. We they, hope we know. We hope we know. But they've also lost a couple of guys on the blue line as well. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, obviously after a very fantastic season last year, it's not going to be the same for them, clearly, right. but they could still bring it and could, could still be a playoff team, bubble team at that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go over here. It's between Victor Arvidsson and Anders Lee right now. Anders Lee brings the shots and the hits, oh, yeah. but Victor Arvidsson brings a little bit more offensive ability to him. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think I'm going to go with Victor Arvidsson right now. He's got that dual eligibility for left wing and right wing, and we've talked about him being one of those guys, uh, obviously for bigger leagues, drafting him towards the later stages because – He's an absolute steal, in my opinion. We're also fully buying into his chemistry with Trevor Moore and Philip Deneau on that third line. I think that's who mostly played together last year. We're also buying into the Kings' big-time steal. So you're a backup on the board, round 15. Who are you going to? 
Well, I'm going to go back to the blue line right here. And mm-hmm. even though he's injured right now, the, the, the peripheral stats are still going to be fine. Over 220 shots, 71 hits, hopefully over 70 blocks. And when he's healthy and if he's good, Ekblad? he's the guy. I'm going to go back to Aaron Ekblad here. Even though he's injured, I think, you know, obviously in the 15th mm-hmm. round, that's a pretty good pick and a pretty good uh, yeah. draft choice for the 15th round. So I like Aaron Ekblad just for my bench defense, uh, my defenseman for my first uh, bench spot. Good payout, payoff in a big way. I'm going yeah. for a security blanket. I talked about it the other day as a late round guy to target. We're in the late rounds. We're in the last two. This guy brings all the peripherals you want, and I wanted to go to the blue line. So give me Adam Larson, over 200 hits, over 130 shots on net, yes. block shots as well. Great pick. I like Adam Larson here as a security blanket back end of the draft that's a great pick he brings those peripherals like we've talked about and i don't think a lot of people again really look into those other stats than just offense i hope everyone's doing their research and obviously depending on what the league settings are in the league format uh check with the category check what the fantasy points are worth obviously goals and assists could be worth a lot more in your fantasy league But don't forget about the hits, the blocks, the penalty minutes, the shots on net, and all those other peripherals that could be added into your league format. And also, don't forget that your goaltending categories could also be weighed more heavily and could also be weighed very evenly. Some leagues are way more skater heavy in the categories. Others balance it out almost 50-50, which is why when I'm looking at my last pick in the draft, and I don't have a backup goaltender yet, and I have a number one goaltender here in Vili Husso available, I'm fine taking Ville Husso as my last pick in the draft. And if something happens to my goalies, Gustafson and a guy in Freddie Anderson, yeah. we know has injuries. I'm fine having a number one goaltender here as again, steel security blanket. It's about balancing out this team. That that's honestly, you explained that absolutely perfectly. You explained Frederick Anderson's I- injury history. I'm in the opposite boat right now. I have full faith in Connor Hellebuck. He already plays a ton of game for the Winnipeg Jets. He Back. does that workload phenomenally. Back. Jeremy Swayman has been the backup for Linus Allmark, but he could be potentially seeing more ice time. So I like both my goalies. I'm not going to draft a third one. That's why I'm going to draft. He was taken. I was going to take Jonathan Marsh. So uh, I need another right wing position right now just to fill out those stats. And I'm going to go with Dawson Mercer. He's on the board here still. Like and we've still. talked about him a lot as well. He'll be I my like last it. pick. To, and he's also got dual eligibility, center and right mm-hmm. wing uh, for both. For, uh, for the Fantasy Hockey League. So dual eligib- eligibility is going to be huge for your Fantasy League. You can't help but love those little bit of, you know, the additional, you already like Dawson Mercer, but the fact that yeah. that eligibility is there adds a little bit more intrigue. It's something that does change all the time, Steel, and even by the time we actually hit the ice here, it could be taken away, but it's something that astute GMs have their eyes all over, something that we'll have our eyes all over, and that's why you got to keep it tapped right here. Right here all the time. Before we wrap up this show, we're just going to list off our entire team right now. I've got a lot of dual eligibility guys. I really like my team. Obviously, again, in a 10-man league, you're going to be absolutely stocked with uh, superstars in every position. I've got Leon Dreisaitl, Sidney Crosby, Carter Verhage, Jared McCann, Mm -hmm. William Nylander, Drake Batherson, and then my defensive group are all studs right now, all young guys. Miro Heiskanen, Maurice Sider, Noah Dobson, Jakob Chikrin, and then my goalies, Connor Hellebuck, Jeremy Swayman, and then my bench position, which I actually like a lot as well, Dylan Cousins, Victor Arvinson, Aaron Ekblad, and Dawson Mercer. Again, in a 10-man league, you're going to be absolutely stocked and loaded. Yeah, I'm liking my blue line as well, Steele. Darlene, Sergachev, Darnell Nurse, Keandre Miller, and then the backup, Adam Larson. I got Vili Husso as my third goalie, which is a nice little security yeah. blanket to back up Freddie Anderson, as well as Philip Gustafson. I got Braden Point, Kaprizov, Matthew Kachuk, Alex Debrinkat, Jordan Cairo as well, and then on the bench, Jake DeBrusque, Matty Beniers. Hey, Steele, we're going to continue to do the Mock Draft Mondays. We've got a couple more yeah. left. The season is approaching, man. I am so <laughs> hyped. I can't wait. I can't wait as well. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you're tuning in Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning is when you can find all of our episodes. And again, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.
Hey, Prime members, you can listen to this Locked On podcast ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today.